How's everyone feeling? Y'all feeling good this morning? Woo! That's what I'm talking about, Mike. Um, we're really happy to have everyone here today in Portland. We are the ICBC. We do our conference all over the world. Uh, we are the first B2B uh, to go international, and uh, we started in Portland four years ago. Uh, it was, uh, I remember me and Anthony talking, and I, we said, what are we going to do? And we said, we're going to start the International Cannabis Business Conference. I said, where are we going to start? We said, Portland. <laughs> and so for a few years, we weren't international. We were just in Portland and San Francisco. And then eventually, we became international. We went to Vancouver, if that counts. <laughs> um, kind of like international a half, right, Canada. You're still in Cascadia, right? And so we went, then we, then we, then we went to Bar uh, Berlin, and we rocked it. We turned it out. And, of course, our, our event in California is the longest running uh, in California. And now we've partnered with Spanibus uh, to be in Barcelona also uh, next year. So we're, we're really, thank you, we're really excited about what we're doing, um, what we have done in Oregon and what we are doing worldwide. So I like to think that wherever we go in the world, we bring a little piece of Oregon with us. And it's really important because when you go to Europe and they're growing all that shitty weed and they just want to make money, 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 and you're like, hey, maybe you could, you know, grow organic or, you know, maybe there's a product, you know, you, we can bring a little of that Oregon consciousness to the world. And I'm not saying we're like all Mother Teresa's here in Oregon, but when you do leave Oregon and you talk to people and you talk, like in Europe, and you talk about some hippie like activism shit, they look at you like you're an alien, like what are you talking about? But it's really important that we push that narrative. And what I tell people in Berlin, uh, uh, hey, Lee, Anthony, hey, Lee, Anthony, please, thank you, appreciate it. What I tell people in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Berlin, the first thing I say to them is your beer, as it's this nascent new market over there, it's really crazy what's going on in Europe. I say, hey, uh, your bureaucrats and politicians are going to fuck shit up. So what's important is that you have a robust home garden and all criminal penalties are ended towards cannabis. And I think this is really important because the industry will get messed up. In Oregon, smaller people have been pushed out, you know, uh, for better or, or mostly for worse. And this is not what we ascribe to uh, at, the, at the ICBC. We think cannabis is an opportunity for the world, not only for business, not only from human rights or civil rights, but we think it can help end the industrial, uh, some of the industrial complexes in the world. And just like my mentor Jack Hare said, hemp can save the world. And we believe it, you know? I, I, thank you, thank you. We used to say it on Hate ashbury you know, back in the day with my dreadlocks, I used to have my signs and hemp can save the world. And I barely believed it myself, you know? But it's true, hemp can save the world. And when we don't have a lot of hopeful shit going on in this world these days, hemp is a, hemp is a great uh, bright light. So I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, thank Jefferson Packing House for that great party last night. Uh, we want to thank uh, Oath. They have a big party um, tonight with DJ Muggs. We want to thank uh, 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 Organic Alcohol Company, the main sponsor. Uh, none of this could be possible without those guys. So uh, 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 let's make some a real quick clap for our sponsors. <laughs> And the Oath Party is tonight at Spirit of 77. Uh, don't forget your pass. Uh, it's at Spirit of 77 right across by the Convention Center. We've got DJ Muggs from Cypress Hill uh, there tonight, DJ Nature, and it is going to be a hoot nanny. So uh, it starts at 9 o'clock. We are feeding you all day today. In the expo room on the side there, we have got buku food. We're feeding you breakfast. We're feeding you lunch. we got an ice cream social in the afternoon. So... You can stay here. You don't need to go uh, spend your money and eat anyplace else if you don't want. We've got you covered right here. Taco bar in the afternoon. It's going to be off the chain. So uh, I just we really appreciate you guys. And we want to feed you and make sure everyone's got uh, all their energy. This is our last Oregon show. So I want to just give a heartfelt thanks to everyone. Never say never, but we do not plan to do another Oregon show for some years now. And this is our 12th show in Oregon in four years. Uh, you know, like I said, we're not going to be in Oregon anymore, but everything we do and how we go forth, uh, we, represent, uh, we represent Oregon. So what we're trying to do is create conduits so when we can finally export cannabis, uh, I'll have created all these awesome conduits around the world so we can sell all our Oregon weed uh, to, the, to the world. So.
That's only a matter of time, too. It, it, it's only a matter of time, and that's really going to change the, the game up. And we're actually going to be talking about that. We've got a great program, but that, we'll be delving into a lot of that, how Oregon can export and some of the possi possibilities. Um, that's it. This is our WOVA app. If you're not on our WOVA app, get on our WOVA app. This makes you communicate with all types of people throughout the conference, and uh, you get all our updates on little uh, uh, announcements, contests, uh, where the party is, and all that stuff. And when lunch comes out, and the ice cream social, and all that good stuff. So get on WOVA. Um, we're going to have this slide up for about 10 more seconds. So if, you, if anybody needs to get on WOVA, just go down to registration, and they'll sign you right on up, OK? Are you guys ready to get this thing started? Yeah. Oh, you guys ready to get started? You guys, we have such a great uh, program for you today. We have a lot of amazing people. Um, I'd like to kick it off uh, uh, really quick with a person who's going to uh, uh, introduce our, our, our uh, opening video. Uh, he is a hero of Oregon. Like I just told him a second ago, I hate m most politicians and I love you. What is going on here? You know what I mean? Because most politicians are, it's hard to be a politician because the game is rigged, right? But guess what? On a local level, we do have a few uh, uh, folks that are, Conscious, consciously minded and, and, and revolutionary thinking and who actually have some power and can get things done. And our one big ally in this state is Senator Floyd Przanski. So without further ado, please make some noise for our beloved Senator Floyd Przanski. Yo, make some more noise for Floyd, y'all. So I want to thank all of you that are here today. I also want to thank Alex for uh, bringing forward this conference. Uh, he's been a trendsetter for the state and as well as he said on an international level. Without ha this type of uh, discourse, we would not be able to move forward as we need to in this industry. It's been my opportunity to, at this point really to just take a few moments to introduce Jeff Merkley uh, before we hear from him on his video. Uh, what I, I first met Jeff back in 1999. Uh, that is the year that he came into office as a state representative, uh, representing part of, uh, of Portland on the east side. Uh, at that point, I got to, I guess, get to know who he was. In 2003, four years later, we had our offices next to each other. This allowed us to spend a lot of time talking together, not only on the issues that were facing the state, but after hours just sitting around and reflecting on where we were, what we wanted, what were our values, how do, could we move Oregonians forward, how could we take care of many of the issues that were facing us, including the economic depression and uncertainty in many rural areas. Uh, he, comes from a uh, background of a uh, rural area. Uh, Myrtle Creek, for those who do not know, is in Southern Oregon. Uh, uh, his father uh, was in the trades uh, as a laborer, and they moved up to here in the uh, Portland area where he finished his high school. It was one of those situations that when we were uh, sitting around and talking, I always found myself just being drawn in by his thoughts, his visions of what he saw for the state and how he thought we needed to move forward. This is one of those situations that I remember uh, when he decided to run for the U.S. Sen uh, Senate. Uh, I was actually traveling back from Burns, so I was on Highway uh, U.S. 20, and I got this phone call from Jeff, and Jeff says, hey, Floyd, what do you think about me running for uh, U.S. Uh, Senate? And I just kind of did a little bit on my uh, drive there going, whoa, that's a pretty big uh, step you're thinking about. He had just been uh, elected and served as the uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, he had been the uh, Democratic leader prior to that. And so I know that he was getting his message out and people were listening. So I told him, I said, if you really feel that you have the ability to move forward at this time in your career to run for that seat, I will support you. And he did walk, go forward. And as we all know, he won the uh, Democratic primary. Uh, that allowed him to go up against the incumbent, uh, Gordon Smith. And it was a very close race. But Jeff seceded, and he's been in the U.S. Senate since 2009. What's really important is seeing how he's taken his visions for this state and has taken them and moved them into a, a much larger, larger, broader area for the country. And it's one of those situations that I've been very impressed to see how he's not uh, been afraid to take very controversial issues and put them out on the table for us to talk about and for others to listen. This is one of those situations that uh, he was the only senator to actually endorse Bernie Sanders uh, for the primary in the uh, 2016. 
And you can only imagine being a senator uh, to take that type of step at that point in his career, what he was demarcating that he was going for, who he thought was going to be the best individual to represent the Democrats in the national election. After that, uh, he, uh, earlier in that year, he, he uh, attempted, I should say earlier this year, he's attempted to uh, enter into one of the immigration detention centers. This is down in South Texas. Uh, for those who have not met me, that's my birth state. And when I heard that Jeff went down to the Harlingen area, what he was attempting to do was to see how children of uh, parents who had been arrested trying to come in to the U.S. seeking asylum were being uh, handled and how they were being taken care of. Well, ironically, they, were placed, they had placed them into a detention in a farmer Walmart and he was denied access as a U.S. senator to go in to check on the welfare of these children. Of course, this made uh, big news uh, throughout not only uh, the, the nation, but also internationally. And it just showed once again where Jeff was willing to take that step to bring and expose the, the needs of individuals that are more disprivileged than he is and how he could in fact bring and shed the light to make certain that they're being taken care of. Besides that, we have seen even this week where um, uh, Jeff is actually was seeking an injunction to stop the confirmation of uh, Brent uh, Kavanaugh uh, because, as he says, how can he, as a U.S. senator, be able to vote on the floor for a nominee without having all of the allegations that have been raised against him being investi investigated through the FBI and then being able to have all of that out in the open, be transparent, and then make the decision as to whether or not that justice should be at elevated to the Supreme Court. Exactly. So at this point, <laughs> I think it's worth noting before we hear from Jeff that uh, in uh, May of this year, he uh, came forward to co-sponsor Senator uh, Cory uh, Broker's uh, Marijuana Justice Act. Uh, this would remove marijuana from the federal list of controlled substances, i.e. making it legal throughout the country. And I think it's really important for us to see again where uh, Jeff has been willing to take that step to move forward to uh, get us as a nation to deal with issues that we should have dealt with back in 1971, 1972. So with that, let me just uh, end with that. He has not only just been a co-sponsor of the uh, legislation I just mentioned, but he's also been uh, af uh, active in trying to uh, get the reform in the banking. As we all know, we need to open up the banking, uh, both through uh, uh, fi uh, financial institutions that include banks as well as credit unions, so we can, in fact, have the accountability. As a legislator, I'm very concerned that we're not uh, helping and facilitate so we can, in fact, make certain that there's accountability and the reality, there's a safety risk here. As many of you that are in the business, to have that type of cash sitting around and not being able to actually do what most businesses do, that is to use a financial institution, is wrong. So he's taken the lead there, and I think it's very important that we also acknowledge that he is also saying that VA doctors should, in fact, have the ability to actually give counseling to vets in states that actually have medical programs as to the benefit of uh, medical marijuana for those individuals. <laughs> So I hope that gives you a little bit of flavor of who Jeff Merkley is, and I, at this point, want us to have an opportunity to see uh, where he's heading and what he wants to do for this industry. And so we'll have a few words from Jeff by video. Thank you.
Greetings, I'm Senator Jeff Merkley, and welcome to the International Cannabis Business Conference. In state after state, the American people have stood up to say that it's time to change cannabis laws in America. That's why four years ago, I was proud as an Oregonian to support Measure 91 and become the first United States Senator to vote for legalizing cannabis in my home state. Now I'm working with my colleagues in Washington to help make these changes at the national level. Because here's what we know about the impact of legalizing cannabis from the states that have done it. More jobs, more tax revenues, fewer arrests, and a second chance for individuals convicted of minor drug offenses who have had their records expunged. Just look at the effect right here in Oregon. The Fiscal Impact Committee originally predicted that legalizing cannabis would generate between 17 and $40 million a year for the state. But the state is on track to double the higher end of that projection and bring in more than $80 million a year. 40% of that revenue goes right back into our schools. Hmm, that's roughly $34 million for our students and teachers. 20% goes into mental health, alcoholism, and drug services. Another 12 to 13 million for the state police, and over 4 million for the Oregon Health Authority. And Oregon isn't alone. The same kinds of benefits can be seen in Colorado, and in Washington State, and in Nevada, all of which have seen actual revenue beat the initial estimates. The time has come for us to change the way our country looks at and deals with cannabis. And I'm working in Washington to make that happen. I've introduced the Safe Banking Act to ensure that legitimate businesses following state cannabis laws have the same access to resources and services that every other business has. Not too long ago, I went and saw for myself how business owners cut off from services and opportunities have to pay taxes, stuffing backpacks and duffel bags full of cash and driving hours to Salem to deposit it. There is no reason that if a state has voted to legalize, business owners should have to operate in this way. It's burdensome and it's dangerous. Billions of dollars in cash is great for organized crime. It's great for money laundering. It's great for cheating on wages and taxes. So we would all benefit by banking the cannabis economy. We also need to make sure that hemp products with low THC are not regulated under the Controlled Substances Act. And I'm proud that this change has been included in the Senate Farm Bill this year. While we still need to get the Farm Bill over the finish line, Getting rid of this illogical restriction will help create jobs and strengthen the agricultural sector across the United States. In addition, I'm working with Senator Booker on the Marijuana Justice Act to decriminalize cannabis, stop racially disproportionate enforcement of cannabis crimes, and give those convicted of past use or possession crimes a clean slate. And I'm a co-sponsor of Senator Schumer's Marijuana Freedom Opportunity Act, which would also decriminalize cannabis throughout the nation. Times are changing. The American people are demanding change to how we treat cannabis across our nation. They know the benefits that legalizing cannabis brings socially, economically, and in our justice system. And I'm determined to help bring about those changes. And I'm thrilled to be working in partnership with all of you to do it. Let's give a big thanks to Jared, our signer here today. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, one more big thanks uh, for uh, Senator Merkley, and let's make some noise and hope that he runs for president, because I know I'd vote for him. So at the ICBC, we like to bring a little star power sometimes, and we've had many exciting guests. Uh, today, we have a very exciting guest who's going to say a few words and introduce uh, the head of the OLCC. Um, you know, <laughs> it's so cool because uh, usually uh, our big stars, we've got to import from LA or someplace around the world. But this big star lives right in Oregon, in Southern Oregon, and grows cannabis and loves cannabis and has a lot of feelings towards cannabis and hasn't necessarily been so um, outwardly vocal, waiting for the right time. And today he's just going to say a couple words about how he feels uh, about our state, cannabis reform, and, and opioid addiction. Um, so without further ado,
please give a warm, warm Oregon welcome to the one and only Mr. Jim Belushi. Yo, make some noise. Jim Belushi in the house. Thanks, brother. Uh, thank you. Uh, very nice introduction. I am here because of the free taco bar this afternoon. <laughs> I understood that it was going to be this morning. And when you announced that they moved it to the afternoon, I'm a little disappointed. So let me get over that for a minute. I love tacos. I uh, do live in Los Angeles, by the way, Alex. Uh, and I have a beautiful little farm on the Rogue River in Eagle Point in southern Oregon, right in the middle of the banana belt. I have a small, beautiful grow there. And I have become so intimate with this plant by growing it, cultivating it, curing it, cutting it, selling it. it, it it's just brought me closer and closer to myself, and it's brought me closer and closer to the miracles and the spirit of this plant. I, um, I believe cannabis, I wrote it down. I believe the wellness of cannabis includes helping to heal Alzheimer's, back pain, headaches, anxiety, seizures. The wellness of cannabis also includes the enhancement of creativity, the spark in the spirit, the enhancement of the sounds of music, the taste of foods, the touch of your lover's skin, but also includes euphoria, joyfulness, higher consciousness. All this is the wellness of cannabis. And I am getting closer and closer to, to all that. I, I have been educated here in Oregon. Oregon is a great state, and it is the great state of cannabis, by the way. I think Oregon is going to lead, lead this country in the great quality and the great science that they produce here. Uh, I've visited with Phylos and all the different scientists here. It's just a remarkable what they're doing here. I'm just overwhelmed by it. The more I get into it, the more I realize I don't know. It's just a wonderful plant to be engaged with. It's just changing my life personally. Uh, I, I had an experience last year. I visited over, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 dispensaries. And uh, they were waiting in line to come in and take a photograph and try out the cannabis that we produced. And I met a, a veteran who was shaking a little bit and staring at me and, and he walked up to me and he said, you know, I was a medic in uh, Iraq and I saw things that happened to the human body that nobody should ever see in their life. He said, my PTSD is, is so bad that I, I, I have three kids that I have trouble relating to, a wife, and I can't sleep. And he said, you're Black Diamond OG. <laughs> it's the only strain that I have found where I can talk to my children and I can sleep. And he like had tears in his eyes and he hugged me. And I went, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I didn't make this stuff, man. I, this has been here for a long time. I, I just, you know, I, 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 I just planted it. He says, he goes, you are the steward. And I went, wow, that's pretty cool. And we all are stewards of this medicine to heal our community. The number one fear in life is death. The number two fear in life is the collapse of family. That is the number two fear. Whether a family falls apart from divorce, disease, uh, PTSD, addiction, a death in the family creates trauma. 80% of the families that experience this kind of disease or trouble uh, don't succeed. The families collapse. And I believe that this medicine 
is going to help our community and help our families get back and not collapse. There was a woman who, whose son had 40 seizures a day. She said he would drop like he'd cut a string on a marionette. She didn't know what to do. She was in that bedroom with that boy every night, never sleeping with her husband because of the care for this child. And she, he was in hospice, taking all kinds of drugs, and she used some CBD oil. Changed this kid's life, changed the family's life. That family almost blew up. So I just love what this is doing. I'm proud to be a steward, and I'm proud of all you for being a steward and keeping this, this going. I mean, I believe that, I believe if we knew what we know now about cannabis in the 70s, if we knew what it was capable of, if we knew it was medicine instead of a drug, there'd be a lot more people alive today. And it is not a gateway drug. It is a gateway to healing. It is a gateway to medicine. It's a gateway to spirituality. I, I am uh, grateful to be here. I'm proud to be in Oregon. And I have uh, gotten to know a lot of people. And our next speaker I've gotten to know this year uh, pretty well, he's more than a friend, he's an acquaintance. Okay, it wasn't joking, you got that, good, I'm so glad. Uh, I, I have been uh, in relationship with him because we've been discussing, um, it's very difficult to get done. Uh, there's a lot of little things going on, but we've been discussing an opiate trade program to begin here in Portland, where we can get free marijuana to the veterans, people on the street, people who have opiate addictions, prescriptions. And I know that every farmer and every manufacturer in Oregon will be glad to donate anything to this program. So we've been talking about it. Steve is a, a very smart man. Uh, I have found uh, that the OLCC is my partner, is my friend. And I'm grateful that they gave me a license. Um, I am their partner. They are my partner. And I'm proud to know this man. I'm proud to know all the people that work for him. Actually, Steve isn't really that good or that smart. It's really everyone that works for him. I mean, these guys are really stars. There's a few of them standing back. Oh, wave your hand. They get nothing. They're always in the office. Hello. Give them a hand. They make Steve look great. But he is doing everything he can to make cannabis work in Oregon. Everything, every day, finding solutions. Every day, running into more problems than finding solutions and fighting and not giving up. He is our director. He is our steward. And I am proud to introduce the director of the OLCC, Steve Marks. Thank you. And the tacos are going to be early in the afternoon. <laughs>